Not only do I want to give them money while they're alive, while they're doing things, so I can see them grow and see them flourish, see them fail and see them pick themselves back up again, see them win. Not only do I see that from heaven, I want to see that here on earth while I'm still walking this earth. I remember my son at 9, 10 years old saw what it was like for us to go to a homeless underneath a lower Wacker in Chicago and feeding the poor. Why should I listen to you? Really, the financial future for me is to get a job? To be at 50 years old and laid off just like you? What do you think ultimately will be more exciting? You becoming a millionaire or your children becoming millionaires? So therefore, you're passing on wealth from generation to generation. You essentially are now creating generational wealth. Well, in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to raise kids with a millionaire mindset and how you can take what you are doing today, unpack it and teach it to your children. Let's codify this whole thing so therefore we can help the next generation become more financially free, financially independent in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking everybody? Money smart guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, listen, I want you to know that we have a sincere, genuine next milestone goal of the Seven Figure Squad, which is it's 150,000 subs, or 30, a little less than 30,000 short from getting there. Why do we want to get there? Because we want to award a church, charity, or a nonprofit from this YouTube channel on behalf of its subscriber community a $5,000 check to help support them in whatever the endeavors that they are doing to help and impact our local community. So please help us get to 150,000 subs. If you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe. Okay, with that being said, I am reminded very clearly of my favorite interview I've done thus far, which was with Rabbi Lappin, and he said something very profound about making money and passing on to the next generation. He said, listen, don't take my money to the next generation, but take my values and principles to the next generation. He said, quite frankly, this is a big reason why the Jewish community is disproportionately more wealthy than any other ethnic or demographic in the world today because of the values and principles they pass on from generation to generation. So I've put together a few points here and how I've helped my five children. Now I've had kids since 1995. I have a 25-year-old, Ruben, I got twin girls that are now 20 years old, Melani and Soledad. We have a son, it's Jojo, and we have our youngest, which is now two years old, Jordan. And these are things that we've imparted to them over the years. Now, all the kids have different phases of me coming up in business because when my wife and I, we came together, we were a blended family, which meant that for 14 years, I was a single father of three kids. And she and at the time, she's a single mother raising Jojo, blended family. And uh, we had different values and principles that we weren't necessarily on the same page. And by the way, so did the kids. But the thing is, they just saw me work. They just saw me grind. They just saw me hustle. And then some things that they'll never forget. But at the time, I was grinding and hustling, putting things together. I was not anywhere close to being a millionaire. But however, what they've kept is the vows and principles that I've imparted to get me where I am today. So number one, to build your kids a millionaire mindset is build them an identity. Give them a vision. Well, that can't be not what you envision for them to do in terms of career or background or business. Don't tell them what you need to listen. One of the most annoying things as a kid is having your parents tell you, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, you're gonna do this, blah, 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 blah. I get it. Listen, mom and dad, I get it. If you're giving them a check to pay for their tuition, all that, sure, understandable. But don't you think it makes sense for them to actually take a career or a line of study that they know they're going to potentially enjoy and embrace one day versus you just shoving it down their throat? Listen, as a Filipino-American kid, we were told five things. Doctor, dentist, attorney, engineer, or if you're a Filipino woman, fifth one, nurse, <laughs> okay? It's a funny joke because it's actually kind of true. When you're looking around the Filipino community, not very many millionaires, and more importantly, not very many entrepreneurs. So when I told my parents I was gonna enlist into the Marines at 17 years old, what? When I told my parents I'm getting out the Marines, I'm not going to college, what? Especially if GI Bill was paying for it? Nope. What? I'm going to be an entrepreneur in the insurance industry? What? What? I was going opposite. I was going opposite what traditional family advice that was handed down from one generation to another would be telling me. Because for the Filipino community, I'm just speaking on behalf of what I've experienced, in order for you to become financially free, it's getting a job in America and it definitely isn't getting a business started. So you have to cast for your children 
an identity that is based on all natural talents and disposition. And quite frankly, you're going to find out about that as they get older, instead of saying, okay, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a dentist, blah, 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 blah. And listen, we've coached many entrepreneurs that want to go in business simply in defiance of what their mom and dad told them to do. Because they didn't want to be a dentist. They didn't want to be a doctor. They didn't want to do this. They didn't want to do that. They want to be financially free. And the way they compartmentalize that and say, yes, 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 yes. And finally, it goes to an explosive, no, I'm revolting. We've run into many of them in their early 20s, mid 20s, because finally now they're speaking up and out to their parents. And next thing you know, $200,000 of student debt unnecessarily is on their shoulders as they're starting their business. But listen, if one thing you can do to them is to expose your children to events, to people, and to experiences. One of the things that we've exposed our children to coming up is a church experience, uh, a choir. We even want to go out and feed the poor. I remember my son at 9, 10 years old saw what it's like for us to go to a homeless underneath a Lower Wacker in Chicago and feeding the poor. And the twins, they saw us at the same time to delivering food to the, the needy and the poor and then delivering it to um, uh, shelters and halfway homes. They saw us do all those things. But it's exposing them, comparing and contrasting. Like, listen, these children or these folks, they don't live in a house that mom and dad live in and you have a completely different life. Potentially, you might be thinking that you're living in a bubble because your life is completely different than the poor and the needy that we're actually helping. So those are some of the experiences that you should consider giving your children. It's more than just vacation. It's more than just the resorts. It's more than just, you know, the beach. It's getting to the areas where a lot of people don't want to visit. Why? Because it gives your children a barometer. It gives your children a baseline to say, listen, if you don't follow through, this potentially can be what your life will look like. People, oftentimes it takes another person to say the same thing to your children that you've been saying to them for 10, 15, 20 years. And they say, oh my gosh, mom, dad, that person said this, that person said, oh my gosh, it was the craziest thing I've ever heard. It was the most uplifting thing, life-changing thing I've ever heard in my life. And you're like, yeah, but I've been telling you that since you were born. Listen, it's the level of proximity. Sometimes children that you raise, along with people that you are in business with on a daily day basis, they forget how special you are. They forget how significant you are. Listen, in the Bible it even says that a prophet cannot even be a prophet in his own land. So what makes you think that your children are gonna directly listen to you? It's somewhat of an arrogant thing for you to assume that, although you are their parent, the mom, the dad, but listen, expose them to different people. We've had our children exposed to many different speakers. We had our conventions. We had our children exposed to Magic Johnson. We have our children exposed to Kevin Hart. We've had our children exposed to uh, President Bush. We've had our children exposed to Kobe Bryant. We've had our children exposed to a lot of these celebrities because a couple of things start happening. Then one, obviously the message that they're receiving is there's high performers and these A-list type of celebrities or these type of people that are above and beyond the norm that's inside their life. And then B, what's starting to happen to them is so like, hey, I could potentially be like them. I can be like them. I can be like them. And at the same time, putting them inside events. Because it's one thing to see mom and dad, you know, say things, but it's another thing to see mom and dad actually in the things. I'll explain that here more in a second. Uh, the other part about this is create for them an incentive plan. Here's the thing. Newsflash. I was in Fox one year and I said, hey, I don't believe in any allowances. I do not give my children allowances. Just because you exist in my house, just because you sleep in my bed, just because you sleep under my roof, just because you eat dinner on my table, doesn't mean you're entitled to an allowance. Zero allowance in my house. What we did do is we said, hey, if you do your chores, you do your basic things, that is the necessary bare minimum for you in order to exist. However, if you do these chores, if you do these chores, there's three different tiers. And based on the depth of chores that you do, based on the work that you want to do around the house, Guess what? Now you can earn some money because no longer are you doing basic chores. You're starting to go above and beyond. They're a call of duty above the quote unquote job description. And I want to incentivize you to do so. So consider having not necessarily an allowance. What's also by the time just having an allowance, guess what that starts to breed? That starts to breed entitlement. That just because I'm here, just because I carry last name, just because I live in your house. Hey, I, I have, uh, you have rich friends, mom. I, I have rich friends too as well. I should have a car at 16 years old. Listen, that's what breeds in time when everybody starts comparing. But if you're showing them an incentive plan, guess what? The burden now is not on you to perform, the burden is on them to perform, and guess what? It's called shared pressure. The second thing here is equal opportunity versus equal 
distribution. You gotta come together with your kids and ask them, hey, listen, what do you wanna accomplish? What do you wanna do, blah, 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 blah. How are you gonna, how are you gonna financially do and finance what it is that you're looking to do? Your football team, your traveling team, you know, your, your trip to Washington, D.C., you wanna do all these different things, you wanna get involved, awesome, I want you, let's start dreaming, boom, 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 awesome. How are you gonna pay for it? How are you gonna fund it? Well, Ma, aren't you gonna do it? Yeah, sure, I could do that, but you gotta do your part. If you wanna do this, you wanna do this, you wanna do this, boom, then you gotta do your part, and man, you're gonna put the pressure on me, mom and dad, to also come through. But guess what's starting to happen to them? So, well, wow, if mom and dad are willing to do this for me, if mom and dad are willing to do this uh, on my behalf, if I do this, guess what? Boom, we come together, now we have a partnership, we have a working relationship, we have a common goal. It isn't just because mom and dad said so. It's because I said so, I wanna accomplish this, I wanna do this, and mom and dad are my partners. They are my funding sources. They're the ones that support me, not only with their actions, but also with their words, if, of course, I do my part. You see, that's what goes on in a kid's head. And one of the analogies I like to share with my kids is that when we go travel, and we go to, for example, we go to Hawaii, we go to Costa Rica, we go somewhere, and we rent a car, right? And I ask the kids, hey man, pretty decent car, right? Awesome. But what do you think you'll take care more of? Do you think you'll take care of a car that you rent, that you turn back, you'll never own? Or do you think you'll value your car? One that you own, the one you pay insurance for, the one you fuel it with gas, the one where you change the oil. What do you think you'll value more? Well, so of course my car. So there it is. There's a value of renting something and there's a value also of owning something. Which would you prefer in your life? So this whole thing that you're creating, it's not just renting my belief in you. You are starting to build your own identity and now you're starting to put your money, your efforts, your grades into this because Again, back to number one, the incentive plan in our house also is reading books. Now, Joe just got a stack of books. Every time I go to the bookstore, I get my book, he gets his stack of books. I just want him to read about people. I want him to read about experiences. I want him to start seeing what other people are doing as success. And in the meantime, he's borrowing their experience, he's renting their experience, so therefore he can start creating his own experience that he will value much more deeply than borrowing for somebody else and even borrowing it from his own parents because now he's starting to create an ownership of his financial future. He's starting to create an ownership of his career, his business, whatever his endeavors are in the future, boom, they're creating a connection between me saying, okay, I'm just doing homework just to get the grade versus man, this is a path to allow me to get to where I want to go and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. The difference between renting and owning the choice is theirs. And another thought here between equal opportunity versus equal distribution. Listen, how many times have you busted your tail all year to save up for Christmas presents? And you bought the Christmas presents and you wrapped it with love, right? And you uh, put it under the tree, right? And next thing you know, with expectation and excitement, you're looking forward to their reaction. So you give the present, they unwrap it, oh, thank you, mom, blah, blah, blah. And then, guess what happens a week later to those toys that you worked hard for, that you wrapped with love, that you gave them with an expectation of excitement when they unwrap it? Guess what happens to that toy that you gave away they didn't have to buy, but you earned every bit of it? Guess what happened? It's lying around, isn't it? It's lying around, and you yell at them, hey, put your toys away. How come this laying around? Take care of your stuff. Well, back to the old renting versus owning thing. They don't care about it necessarily because guess what? They didn't buy it with their own money nor did they put any effort to earning it. So when it comes to building a legacy of kids that have a millionaire mindset, the reality is there's benefits in understanding how I should own something and take pride in owning it and the efforts to get it versus you just flippantly just giving it to them and it landing on their lap. Listen, I'm reminded of the movie, The One Percent, which was produced by one of the Johnsons one of the heirs of the Johnson & Johnson Company. And he said, one of the worst thing you can have is inherited wealth because it makes you want for nothing. Think about that. And he's making that movie and he's clowning rich people. He's clowning the ultra rich. He's clowning these, these plutocrats because he's got nothing else to do. The kid's bored. So many of you think, man, I wish I was a millionaire. I wish I was a billionaire. Yeah? Well, these kids are saying, man, I wish I had an opportunity to own some of this, to earn some of this, so therefore I can value it. But if I wake up every day, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to hustle, I don't have to grind because all my bills are paid and things are set. And if 
things don't go my way, I make one or two phone calls and things are set again. That's not how you empower the next generation to want to kill it and take it to the next level. Number three, trust score. I share with my kids all the time. When you grow up, there's this thing you're going to have to develop. It's called a credit score. And a score is an opportunity for you to show the banks and to show the world that when you borrow money, that when creditors lend you money, whether it be a credit card, personal loan, car loan, student loan, whatever loan that you, a home, whatever it is that you choose to borrow, you have to show that you have the ability to repay. The ability meaning you got the financial resources to pay it back, that you have an income to pay your ongoing debts, you have a debt to income ratio that's well within the parameters for them to loan you money, et cetera, et cetera. A credit score with Equifax, trade and Experian, boom, you're gonna get issued a loan because you have a certain credit score. But the thing with my children, so listen, you might have a credit score with them. You have a different thing called FICO score. But with me, because I'm your dad, and I happen to be also a family banker, <laughs> and not the non-formal way, the conceptual family banker type of mindset, is listen, your dad can fund and finance your goals and your dreams, the things you want to do next, your business, your career, your school, whatever it is that you, I'm going to help fund and finance your next goal. Would it be a car? Would it be a school education? Would it be a business? Something. I want to be your bank. We are creating a family wealth here. I'm your family banker, okay? And so you develop with me a trust score, much different than a FICO score, trust score, which means that just like you show the bank why we should lend you money, why you're worthy of this loan, that you have the ability to repay, you got to understand too, your father, your mother, your family here, we have a different credit score with you. If you give us a score and you show us that you are willing to hustle for this, you're willing to grind for this, boom, 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 we'll hook you up. We'll take care of the funding and financing it and we'll keep the money in house in exchange, you get the money necessary to help you build your goals and your dreams. There's been a FICO score and a trust score. That's what we've built with our children to help say, you know what? I have a much better opportunity with my parents, with my family members to build a family business than going to some flipping bank and they're gonna run me through the ringer. What kind of mindset do you wanna create with your children? What type of attitude are they gonna have towards you? Because listen, if, as much as you potentially want to give them wealth through a will or trust down the road, you might want to say, you know what? I want you to partner with me while I'm alive. So therefore my kids aren't waiting for me until I get buried in the ground so they get access to me. Listen, not only do I want to give them money while they're alive, while they're doing things, so I can see them grow and see them flourish and see them fail and see them pick themselves back up again and see them win. Not only do I want to see that from heaven, I want to see that here on earth while I'm still walking this earth to coach them and to consult them, to help them with certain play-by-plays that they might need, some access to relationships that I might already establish. So what you do is more important to your kids now than what you said in the will, than what you said uh, 10 years ago that you may not have executed with. Because as I wrap up, I wanna share with you this. At the end of the day, if you want to establish children that have a millionaire mindset, mom and dad, I'm talking to you. What? personal example are you setting? Hey baby, you can do anything you want in the world and yet they see mom and dad not doing anything with their life or their opportunity or to come above and rise above the current situation. Hey, you can do this and you can do that but if you are sitting there just cheering them from the sidelines and you're not involved, guess what? The impact of those words are not as strong as you also doing it yourself because here's the thing, you want to establish with your children moral authority. One of my family members said to me, hey Matt, when you get out the Marines, you need to go get a job. You're a single father now, you need to get squared away, you need salary, you need benefits, 401k, health insurance. Just look at that family member, really? Do I need to really follow your guidance? Do I really need to follow your example? Because quite frankly, you have zero moral authority with me because you've been laid off twice, three times, four times, five times. Why should I listen to you? Really, the financial future for me is to get a job? To be at 50 years old and laid off just like you? and you're moseying around pissed off at the world that the world's not giving you a shot? Why are you telling me to give trust and faith into something that you have been let go with? So zero moral authority with me. With that being said, I wasn't raised with millionaire parents, with millionaire family. I was raised by immigrant parents in a neighborhood where we're just trying to fit in to get in. But now that I see things, now that I want to pass on things to the next generation, I don't want to say, hey, just follow what I say, not what I do. Uh-uh, that doesn't fly with kids. Because here's the thing, kids will do half 
of what you do right and twice of what you do wrong. Again, let me say it one more time. Half of what you do right and twice of what you do wrong. So just because you say, hey, I would love for my children to have a millionaire mindset, my parents out there, folks, listen to the single mom, single dad, listen to this thing. If you want your baby boo-boo <laughs> to be doing a lot of great things in their life, I hope you set the example too as well, that when opportunity comes its way to present itself to you, to lift up your game, to lift up your finances, lift up your family, that you don't lift your nose up at it like you're too cool for school to actually go out about and doing it because your children will always respect not what you say, but more so about what you do. With that being said, guys, I'd love to know what you think, what you've been doing that's helpful for you to raise your children to have a millionaire mindset. What are some of you guys doing out there? Put it in the comment section below. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Put in the comment section below. What are your thoughts? With that being said, guys, before I let you go, a couple videos for you to watch. Number one, why you must become a millionaire. You know, things today in our country are starting to get more and more and more expensive. Things are costing more money. This is a video for you, why you must become a millionaire. Number two, one early obstacle every millionaire must face and overcome. Check out this video as the conclusion of this. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications. Be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.